And that's because this streak, once again, is pulling back the safety, making the safety have to follow him. He can't give that up, or obviously it's going to be a one-play touchdown. And the flat route here keeps the cornerback in conflict to the point where he can't really match the, the either one of them. Like I said, they're both open here. And this is not a glitch. It's just how it's programmed. As you can see right here, once he gets off the line of scrimmage, there's nobody covering the fifth receiver. And that's because the defense is programmed to react this way. <laughs> If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shots. Nimmin of the Mad Cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to read and beat every single defense in Mad 25, from pre-snap reads to post-snap reads. But before I do, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. And if you need more help or more money plays, I go over this stuff in longer detail in my eBooks. All you have to do to download them instantly is click the links in the description or the top pinned comment if you need more help. Now, the first thing I want to say before I start is that there are certain factors that can change uh, how you make your reads based off of what type of offensive formation you're in or where you are on the field. Typically, when you read a defense, you want to look at the outside cornerbacks first, but you can see on a play like this, the cornerbacks are at a different depth as the cornerback on the left side is further back than the cornerback on the right side. And that's because I'm in an offense here that has two tight ends on one side and a receiver on another. So if you're looking at an offense like this, Typically, no matter what defense I'm in, if I go to uh, a cover three, if I change it up, you can see that cornerback is still down really low on the right side and backed off on the left side based off the fact that the cornerbacks are programmed to play closer to tight ends because of the fact that they're not as fast compared to receivers. Another variable that you'll see a lot when it comes to offensive personnel packages is that when you see tightly condensed offenses like this where all the receivers and tight ends are this close to the line of scrimmage, a lot of times, especially man coverages, you'll notice that the uh, defenses won't react the same. Cover two man is typically a press look like this, where the cornerbacks will be right in front of the receiver's faces. But when it comes to a tightly condensed offensive personnel package like this, you won't typically see that. Where you are on the field can also have that effect, as typically things like cover three and cover four, the outside cornerbacks will stay further away from the line of scrimmage. But when you're close to the end zone like this, there's not a lot of space. So you can see they're a lot closer to the receiver and tight end than normal. And that's because there's, a lot, there's not a lot of space to drop back. That gets even more exaggerated the closer you get. So if I'm on the one yard line, you're going to see how the cornerbacks are going to be right in front of the receiver's faces. And that's because there is no space to drop back regardless of the defense. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to start at the 50 yard line. And that's because you have to count uh, how far back these outside cornerbacks are every single play. But if your opponent was at the you know, 42 yard line, you just have to count. You, you can even use the, the little markers in the middle of the field, the hash marks there to count how many um, yards apart uh, the cornerbacks are compared to the receivers on offense. So on this play, they're five yards of the line of scrimmage. That's gonna be indicative of a cover two zone. This is the only defense that does that where the cornerbacks are five yards off the line of scrimmage. Pretty much every other defense will be eight yards off the line of scrimmage, including cover three, which is gonna be the next defense. And you'll notice that these cornerbacks drop back to about an eight yard depth. So since every single defense or the majority of the defenses I'm gonna show you have an eight yard drop uh, to start a play, you know, how can you tell the difference between other defenses? If you see a single high safety like this, you know that it's most likely a cover three zone or a cover one man. I'll show you the difference between cover three and cover one in a minute, uh, but that's gonna be your easiest tell. Eight yards off the line of scrimmage for the cornerbacks, single high safety. If I switch to cover four here, you can see we still have the eight yard drop when it comes to the outside cornerbacks, but now the safeties are splitting the field and they're very wide and that's because they're trying to match the, the receivers that they're most likely to cover once the play starts, which for the outside cornerbacks is gonna be the outside receivers. And for the uh, the safeties, it's gonna be the slot cornerback on the left side and the tight end on the right side. When you get to uh, split defenses like cover six, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have different drop depths when it comes to the outside cornerbacks. Anytime you come to the line of scrimmage and you see one cornerback back further than the other, you're gonna know that it's a split defense. You really just have to read. I got eight yards on the left side, five yards on the right. So I know eight yards on the left side means it's gonna be a cover four of some kind. And on the right side, it's gonna be a cover two of some kind. Next up, I'll go over man 
man coverage is you'll notice in a man coverage that typically every defender will be within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. There won't be anybody deep. There won't be any safety help. This is a very easy defense to read, and you'll also typically have man alignment. I'm in a condensed formation once again, so you can see how the cornerbacks aren't matching. They're giving up inside leverage. This is something that you used to be able to fix by man aligning, but this isn't even something that exists anymore. When it comes to cover ones, there are cover one presses, which will look different. Typically in a cover one press, you'll see how the cornerbacks will be right in front of the receiver's faces. But in this look here, since they're not pressing, I mean, that defense, not a lot of people run cover one press anyway, based on the fact that um, it's very easy to get beat over the top with a streak. But a cover one hole is going to have eight yard depth once again for the outside cornerbacks, typically man aligned. But like I said, condensed packages are different. That's why they're giving up inside leverage. When it comes to seeing the difference between cover one and cover three, especially in a formation like this, the cover three cornerbacks will be more outside because they're they're covering the area outside. So that's the easiest way to tell. You can see here they, they basically shifted away to give up even more inside leverage. Although it looks like I'm in cover one. This is actually the defense I'm in now. I'm in cover three. You can see the outside leverage that they're, that they're uh, trying to play with. And that's because they're trying to make sure that nobody gets outside of them or above them. But cover one hole will be much more man aligned. So keep that in mind. That's the main difference there. When it comes to cover two man, this one's probably the most unique. Uh, they'll typically be right in front of the receiver's faces. But once again, condensed package. They're playing a little bit off, but they're still playing within a five-yard barrier. So your typical cover two man will look like this, especially against a spread offense, where they're going to be right in front of the receiver's faces. Now, your opponent can hide their defensive coverage, either using the new coverage shell system or coming out in base in their coaching adjustments. If they do that, you really just have to make a post-snap read. It's really that simple. And you can do that either by watching the safeties are watching the cornerbacks. Watching the safeties will be a little bit more important, but watching the cornerbacks can also be give you that away as well. If you notice once the play starts that the receivers are being followed by a specific defender, you know it's a man coverage. But if they're not being followed, if they just kind of drop back into a space, whether these cornerbacks drop back or drop down, you know that's a zone coverage. So that's the easiest way. You shouldn't even really have to look at the cornerbacks or the uh, defenders to tell whether it's a man or zone. That should be pretty obvious based off the fact that they'll typically be following very closely or they won't be following at all. When it comes to uh, you know reading the defense, reading what zone coverage you're looking at, that's going to come to looking at the safeties. So every time a play starts, I'm going to watch the safeties. You can see right here, we had a safety rotate over, and it looked like, from what I was seeing, a cover three. One of the safeties dropped down. One of the safeties rotated over. This is typically going to look be the look that you see. So if you're going to want to watch these safeties here and see what they do. I'll go and I'll get the camera to split the middle. You can see one dropped down to the outside. The other one rotates over and the cornerbacks drop back. So it's an obvious cover three because obviously everybody here is in a cover three shell. That's how you're going to tell what you're looking at after the snap. So now that I showed you guys how to read these defenses, I'm going to show you guys the ways that they're vulnerable so you can attack them because that's going to be the next step. So since I know that five yards off means cover two, all I really need is a pull route and a flat route, which the running back can do, uh, but it doesn't even have to be a flat route. It can be any number of concepts, but I'm going to show you that in a second. But you need something to pull back the safety and something to pull the cornerback down or at least put the cornerback in conflict. On a play like this, the A flat route or the RB uh, corner route can both get open. I really just have to watch which way the cornerback shades and take the other one. And if I see something, I'll take it right away. Typically, the flat route will obviously get open first because it's a shorter route. Give yourself an opportunity for a catch and run. But against uh, a defense like this, the corner route should get open also. So we'll just hold the ball a little bit longer and try to force that. You can see how wide open it is to the point where I can basically get a catch around one play touchdown with an 84 speed or an 83 speed tight end. Now this exact same concept can be done in a lot of different offenses. If I want to switch over to this particular offense here, which is basically a trips formation, I can have that exact same success by putting the Y receiver on a streak. And now he's going to pull back the safety while the uh, hitch will put the cornerback in conflict and the B receiver will be wide open. As you can see right here, we have that running up the sideline now. So there's a lot of ways to beat cover two to the outside. They're especially vulnerable when it comes to that area. Typically, when it comes to beating cover three, you're going to want to take the flat routes because the cornerbacks dropping back a lot of times will let these routes get open underneath for catch and run opportunities. But you could also typically beat them up the seam, which is going to be something we'll have to change over to a different offense. We can go back to that exact same shock play, and you'll see how if I put the, the two tight ends on streaks, they're going to put the, the safety in the middle at conflict and he, one of them is going to get open every single time up the seam. Now, if you're in an offensive personnel package where you have a split wide receiver all the way to the boundary like this, you can simply put him on a 10 yard out route also and he'll find space uh, out underneath the dropping cornerback but outside 
of the um, the quarter flat, which is trying to, or the curl flat, which is trying to cut that off underneath. And that same trick works against cub for regular work. These 10 yard out routes will get open outside the cornerback, and you can also throw it to the running back underneath on uh, short checkdowns. As you can see here, once again, he rounds that route off. I don't know if he got both feet in bounds, but you can see how you could do that because it's basically the same uh, effect. The outside cornerbacks are dropping back the same way. So you can really have a lot of success trying to do that, or you can have a lot of success underneath based on the fact that once again, the cornerbacks drop back the exact same way. And that also goes for cover four match, which I'm in now. As you'll notice, the outside cornerbacks, like I said, they do man match. But in a play like this, you could still beat that cornerback out the exact same way. So 10 yard out routes to me are very underutilized. Same thing goes with the running back. I can put him on that out route once again. And you'll notice that he'll get open underneath because once again, the cornerbacks drop back. They're still prioritizing any route over 10 yards. But an even easier way to beat this is going to be to have five routes that go over 10 yards. So if your opponent is running a cover four, a lot of times one of the best things to do would be to simply put, um, you know, run like a verticals kind Concept. So this is typically what we don't have it in this playbook, but this is typically what a verticals concept looks like as you see We have five deep routes meaning that one of them is going to get open by themselves every single time And on this play it was the crossing route which you can see was completely uncovered and this is not a glitch It's just how it's programmed as you can see right here once he gets off the line of scrimmage There's nobody covering the fifth receiver and that's because the defense is programmed to react this way now if you have an opponent running a split defense you're typically just going to want to uh, read which size to cover two side and try to attack that you can see here they're actually auto flipping so they're not going to let me do that but you have the ability to, to do the exact same thing we're going to motion the receiver over and we'll put him on a flat and we'll put x on a corner so that we don't really have to uh to worry too much we don't really need a safety pulling back at this point is basically what i'm saying but we'll attack the cover two side and you can see how we could still do that exact same concept and that's wide open but we really could have hit either one of these routes now when it comes to beating man the same routes beat man every single time whether it's a zig a slant uh i don't know if i have a zig here uh in my hot route because of aj brown but uh zigs will beat it drags will beat it uh the tight end route will beat it the corner route will beat it i can put the running back on a five yard out route. I mean, there's really so many routes that beat man coverage uh, because man coverage, especially man zero is designed to be worse. Uh, man cover one and man cover two are not as bad. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I said, there's too many routes to beat man. I mean, I could hit this, you know, I'm not even picking up the blocking. I'm just gonna hit these quick drags, slants, uh, even comeback routes, which I'm not sure if I can put somebody on because of the condensed uh, formation. But if I wanna put B here, on a comeback route, that'll beat man the exact same way. As you can see here, once I, if I just have to time that throw and he comes back to the ball, very easy. Uh, I could use out routes the same way, in routes, pretty much every route in your hot route adjustment. Um, and then I'll go ahead and I'll bring up my hot route adjustment. But pretty much any route that breaks in your hot route adjustment will work. I can even put uh, B here on a curl. As you'll see here, he'll stop right in front of the receiver, come back to the ball. I mean, beating man coverage, especially man zero, it should be very easy. Cover one hole reacts the exact same way. It just has a safety over the top. Uh, but if you're going against a cover two, it's going to react the exact same way. The only real difference is a lot of times those receivers will get pressed and you have to play the leverage. You can see right there, I had inside leverage so I could take that. But if the cornerback presses and takes away that inside leverage, like on the other side, the RB route, here, there he gets inside once again. Like I said, I really have to play, does my receiver win the press or not? That's really going to be the biggest thing. The same routes are going to work but whether or not you can throw it is based off the fact that sometimes the receiver won't get inside leverage. Like I need inside leverage to beat this receiver here. It's really that simple. If he doesn't get that, I don't want to make that throw. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more videos like this, more tip videos, I have some I already made popping up on screen. But other than that, make sure to be subscribed, like button, let me know in the comment section. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.